What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Sports Cards here for the weekly update, the Sunday morning show. Today, we're going to touch on some baseball and some basketball. No football this week. Uh, I did the football video a few days ago. Football market's been fairly flat. Shocking. Wentz hurts up. Pretty much everyone else middling. Mahomes seems to have leveled off. There's your football update. Before we get into it today, I mentioned this at the tail end of a video earlier this week. Um, and I'm, I meant to do it earlier in the video and I forgot. So I'm doing it at the beginning of this video. I just wanted to give everyone, everyone who has ever watched the video, click the like, click the dislike, left a comment, subscribed, unsubscribed, shared a video, whatever. My sincere thank you. We hit 5,000 subscribers earlier this week. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I never thought I would be sitting here, not even eight months after starting the channel, with over 5,000 subscribers, um, getting a bunch of views, comments, etc. on videos. This started out as a something to keep me occupied during a pandemic uh, and has turned into ooh, something else completely. So I just wanted to give everyone a sincere thank you for all the support, all the comments, all the love, all the hate. I don't care. Whatever. You watch the video. That's all that matters. Like it, hate it. Uh, but yes, thank you to all of you for watching, supporting, et cetera, et cetera. With that being said, YouTube stuff down below. Let's get into it. Before we dive into individual sports, wanted to touch on a couple things. CSG now accepting sports cards. I initially thought maybe I would sub some stuff to them. I don't think I am at the moment. I really just do not like their holder. I think it's ugly. Uh, so I'm going to let the market play itself out. The same goes for HGA. Not that you can really submit to HGA even if you want to. They have the weekly caps and their site seems to crash or sell out basically within five minutes of going live every Friday. Uh, I mentioned this in the live stream I did earlier this week in the Q&A. I am playing a wait and see approach with both these companies after getting semi burned by SGC last year in regards to them over promising and under delivering. I'm playing a wait and see approach with these two fool me once, uh, you know, shame on me, fool me twice, whatever, however that saying goes, I think I messed that up, but I don't really care. Regardless, you get the point. Uh, I am not diving full throat into two new grading companies after the SGC experience last year. I am going to let things play out, see how the market treats them. Maybe I'll end up losing money out on the deal for not being first to market with a CSG slab or whatever. I'm intrigued by both of them. I honestly hope that they do relatively well because more competition is better for all of us. The more viable grading options we have, means there's more places to submit cards to, more ways to edge out a profit, come up with a system, whatever it is that you're doing. It just gives us more options. And absolute worst case scenario, it puts pressure on PSA to get better. So if they're still going to be the dominant kings in the world, which I don't see anything changing with that anytime soon, at least two new grading companies in the game put some downward pressure on them to up their game so they don't get passed up, at least hopefully. Hopefully they're not like a Beckett where Beckett just seems to sit and idle along, not really doing much and kind of letting people pass them by. I will be very curious to see, say, before NBA season next year, where we rank the grading companies because we will have PSA, Beckett, SGC, almost a full year of HGA, and almost a full year of CSG, like nine months of the two new kids. So it'll be curious to see where things sit. Uh, and I probably expect content on those things. So let's get into the individual sports and get you all about your day. Baseball first, least shocking thing ever. Well, the contract was shocking, but Tatis Jr. gets a new contract. Tatis Jr.'s prices go through the roof. This is one of those interesting ones where just because a team pays a player more, 
their card values go up. I, I guess Padres fans are excited that he's locked in for two decades or whatever it is now. So they went out and bought up all this stuff. I don't know if it's just like affirmation that the player is really good because the team's willing to sign under that sort of contract. Or if it's just your name's in the news, people are going to run out and buy your stuff. Maybe it's just as simple as that. I don't know. But regardless, his prices skyrocketed this week. Um, They had gone up a couple months ago, uh, first of the year, kind of like took it up to the next plateau level. They had flattened out for a while, slowly creeping up. But now they have spiked again based off this news. And we can see here both his paper and his chrome are way up. Paper is up 22 percent. 330 bucks now and the chrome is up 33 percent now a almost 500 dollar card for his tops chrome psa 10 giving juan soto a run for his money uh of super expensive young guys so we'll see where this goes from here i don't see this pulling back much because we are in like the perfect hype period for baseball I actually, right before he signed the contract, picked up a Tatis Tops Chrome 10 on Starstock for like 340 bucks. Right when he signed the contract, I actually bought another one for 400. So I don't know if I'm going to leave those on Starstock or send them home. We'll see. Um, but yeah, Tatis Jr. going big. Cody Bellinger next on the list. Um, once again, baseball, these random guys kind of start popping off this time of year. There's really no news about Bellinger at this point, but his tops Chrome is also up 35% jumped from 250 to 340 in the last seven days with no real news about it. And I just assume what a lot of these moves are, are people just getting ready for baseball, making moves, anticipating things, buying in the star players, et cetera, et cetera. Also, some other group, YouTuber, influencer, whatever, could have said, hey, I really like Cody Bellinger, and then it causes a mini price spike. That stuff happens all the time, too. But we're in the lead-up to baseball season, so anything is completely possible. But Bellinger is absolutely on the rise. Vladdy Jr., his top scrum, also made pretty good moves this week, up 30%. Started the week at about 100 bucks, ends the week at about $140. And a lot of his stuff starting to move. Um, I've noticed price movements across the board on a few of his different things. He's one of those guys that has 15 different rookie cards. Um, the market only respects a couple. But when you look at Vlad Guerrero rookies, the list is a mile long. And this is why baseball confuses the hell out of me. So it is what it is. But in general, his stuff is going up. The only mainstream one that looks like it hasn't moved up yet is his Tops Heritage. I know it was a lower end brand one, but I actually like Topps Heritage quite a bit. Uh, I like the way the cards look. They remind me of collecting cards as a kid. Um, that one hasn't moved yet, but I would assume that it will also see price movement at some point in time here shortly. I think those are still sitting at around $50, give or take. Basketball. Talked about this in the video on uh, Friday. I think that went up uh, about just some random thoughts on the modern NBA market Thursday. That video was Thursday. And we are beginning to see money shift to the playoff teams. And as I talked about, I believe money is starting to come back to the modern market. It seems like the Jordan stuff has slowed down a little bit, at least at the top end. The last couple 86 Fleer PSA 10s went for less amounts. They did not break new records for a while there. Everyone that sold was breaking the previous sales record. And the last two have sold for Slightly under that, not a ton. I think it's down like 10 or 20%. But I think that's going to start trickling down. And as I talked about in that other video, I believe we're starting to see the modern news cycle kind of pick up. Uh, Zion's been getting a ton of hype lately. Um, we're heading into the NBA trade deadline. That's a bunch of news and rumor mill stuff. And as we just saw with Tatis, he signed a new contract extension. His prices went up. What's going to happen when one of these, you know, on the cusp playoff teams brings in a new weapon? Prices are probably going to go up for those guys. And we're really starting to see money flow to the teams at the tippity tippity top. Number one, uh, two of the biggest movers this week were both on the 76ers. They are probably on paper the best team in the Eastern Conference, them and the Bucks. And 
Embiid had a career high 50 the other night. His stuff's up 20% uh, from 585 to 720. And of the modern guys going up, I still actually think he may be a bit undervalued. Um, as long as he doesn't get hurt, and that's the scary part with him, and I think that's the reason why his prices don't get the respect that the rest typically do. Also, he's a big man, and those guys tend not to get the respect either. But on top of that, he has a tons of injury history, but he is just absolutely amazing this year. If it wasn't for the LeBron MVP narrative, I think he may be one of the favorites, him and the Joker, probably more so him just because the Nuggets don't have the record to back it up at this point. Um, but yeah, Embiid's just been playing out of his mind, and so has Ben Simmons, are the next person on our list. Simmons, both his optic and his prism are way up. His optics up 69%. And I did not realize these got all the way down to hundred dollars. If I would have saw that I'd have been buying like a fool. Uh, and his prism is up to $420 up 27%. Simmons doesn't have the offensive flash all the time. Like a lot of the players do, but he's probably one of the best, if not the best defenders in the league. Uh, and he is a stat stuffer, you know, points, rebounds, assists. He's not going to have huge 50 point games or anything like that. Most of the time, he's not going to drain a bunch of threes, but boy, he is just a very, very good NBA player. And I see the Sixers poised. I would say anything less than the Eastern Conference finals is a major disappointment for this team, given the state of the East. So I think Simmons and Embiid both have a lot of room to grow. Even with these current, quote unquote, inflated prices off the last week's moves. Uh, continuing the same trend, the other hottest player in the league this week, Donovan Mitchell. His stuff's been on fire really the last two weeks. Uh, he's up 35% on his optic, 30% on his prism, and only 15% on his select concourse. So there might be a little bit of room there on the select concourse. I uh, included a couple extra cards in here this week just to kind of shine some light on the optics and selects of the world and see how they're doing compared to the prism to see if maybe they make bigger price movements than Prism does as this money begins to shift back to modern. I kind of want to keep an eye on the trends to see where the money is going. So, but to this point, they're basically a dead heat with select maybe going a little bit behind, but started the week at 275, ends at 316. Prism started at 440, ends at 576. And Optic starts at 200 and ends at 264. So pretty good week for Donovan Mitchell. And I can see this trend continuing. They are the first place team in the Western Conference. You know, other than the Lakers, I don't know that they really have a lot of threats out there. That team is extremely good, extremely well coached. They have Gobert anchoring, anchoring the defense. Mitchell flying around. Conley's back healthy again. Clarkson coming off the bench. Could they beat a fully powered Lakers team? Maybe, but... Lakers have issues of their own right now with Davis. Obviously, a long way to go till we get to the playoffs, a trade deadline to get through, buyout market, et cetera. But the Jazz are definitely a favorite in the West. And I still think, to be quite honest with you, especially like his optic and stuff, and even the prism for 500, to me, that still seems way too cheap, even with the increased prices. Mitchell has been the number one most criminally underrated slash undervalued card in the card market since it exploded, you know, a year and a half to two years ago. He makes the number one list of every freaking content creator in the world, myself included, on guys that should be cards should be worth more than what they're actually selling for. And if people finally give him the recognition that he deserves, I don't understand why this card's not. You know, Tatum, who was his same class as him, is a $700, $700, $750 card, almost $800 sometimes in a PSA 10 prism. I don't know why Mitchell wouldn't be on that level. So I think there is plenty of room to go up with this. And also, like I said, I, I think they're poised for a deep playoff run. Now, the West is loaded. Maybe someone sneaks up and knocks them off in an early round, but they are cruising. So I think you could really buy in now and sell before the playoffs and still be okay if you could find some deals on any of his key rookie cards. Uh, let's touch on Zion for a minute. Zion has just been getting media pumped left and right this week. Every major podcast has been talking about him, and rightfully so. He has been playing great.
great. Zion, I've talked a lot about on the channel. He's an extremely fun player. He's amazing to watch. I will absolutely flip him all day long, buy his stuff, hold it for a little bit, sell it. My stance, and I continue to stick to it, I do not want to be holding Zion long term. There are very few cards I want to be holding long term. Zion is not one of them. I do not have some big elaborate five-year plan with Zion stuff. It's buy it, it goes up, sell it, rinse and repeat, essentially. Um, I just worry about injuries with him. You could say that with any player, but his body type specifically just scares me. But some interesting things are happening here. So Zion is up a lot across the board, except for his prism. So his prism PSA 10 base, $628 to start the week, ends the week at $628 for a 0% change. His optic, on the other hand, is up 20%, $50 change. His select concourse is up 20%, $73 change. And his select premiere is up 20%, $83 change. So money is shifting back to Zion, but I don't want to say it's not shifting back to Prism. However, I think this is where the population counts start to come into play. There are almost 16,000, yes, you heard that correctly, Prisms of Zion. So it takes a lot to move that number when there's that many of them out there. However, the Optic, there's only 5,000 up. The Select Concourse, there's just under 2,000. And the Premier is just under 500. Looking at these numbers, if I was buying in the Zion, that Select Premier only being $60 more than the Concourse seems like the one to go after with a population count of 466 or whatever it is. That is a very small number. And I think, like I said, I believe this is where we're starting to see those pop counts come into play. It takes a lot to, a lot of activity to move that number off 620 something. But those lower pop counts, one person comes in and buys two or three of them, maybe even four of them. Uh, only nine have sold in the entire week. If someone comes in and clears out inventory on that in one big buy move, you could jump that card to the next price level real easily. Uh, and then last but not least, I just wanted to touch base on Luca. Luca's basically flat this week. Uh, Optic is up 2%. Prism's down 5%. Concourse is up 1%. Premier is down 1%. So he basically nets out to very little change. His Prism went down 75 bucks, but it just went up 75 bucks the week prior. So he's basically leveled out at about that $1,300 mark. Do I think the Mavs are going to make a deep playoff run this year? No. Are Luca's prices, are we at an all-time low right now? Maybe. Could they go lower? Possibly. Here's my theory with Luca. I think looking at these prices today on like more of a broadband, like not looking at an individual week, but like the month of February. Next October, right before the NBA season starts, what do we think these cards are selling for? My gut tells me it's going to be a lot more than these prices. Once again, with a caveat of unless the whole cookie crumbles. I don't know if these are an all time low, but I think they are plenty low enough that you could buy basically anything Luca right now. Stash it in a shoebox and check back in with it in October and probably make a good chunk of money. Now, maybe you don't want to tie money up for that long. I get that. I just see a day in October when I'm doing one of these or I'm doing my top five Luca cards to invest in before the season starts. And I run the charts back six months and I'm like, man, look at those prices in February. I wish we would all bought more then, huh? I just see that playing itself out. I, I, someone said it and I don't remember where one of the podcasts or something that I listen to or YouTube videos. I watch a ton of content during the week. Uh, when I'm riding around in the car, listening to the podcasts and, and YouTube videos and stuff. And uh, they said this is like a gap year for Luca. You know, this is the this is the year to kind of like take a step back, you know, get your stuff together. You know, the Mavs really aren't in position, this, that and the other thing. And then they have a ton of cap space, not a lot of players out there to go get, but they have a ton of cap space this year. So 
you know, they go out, sign a free agent, Victor Oladipo, whatever. I have no idea. I'm just basically pulling a name off the top of my head because I know he's a free agent. What's going to happen? Lucas prices are going to spike based off the news of them making a move. Whatever the move is, trade, free agency, whatever, his prices are going to spike. Then the hype machine is going to get rolling down the hill. Look what happened with the Hawks. Hawks made a bunch of moves, had a bunch of calf space. Oh, man, this is great. Trey Young's prices went to the moon. What happens if Luka gets help this offseason? His prices will go nuts. Now, maybe the time to buy is a couple months from now, right after they get eliminated from the NBA playoffs or the NBA season, depending on what happens. But they will most likely make at least a playing game, probably an actual playoff spot. We'll see, though. West is tough. Maybe they dip a little bit lower than what they are right now, but I don't know that it's so low that it's going to make that big of a difference in the aggregate. The only reason you might want to wait is because you don't want to tie the money up into that long when you can maybe wait another month or two to get into Luca, maybe three months and then hold them for a shorter period of time. But regardless, keep a close eye on Luca stuff. We are going to look back at one point in time at this little section and been like, what the hell? Were we all thinking? That's all I got for you guys today. YouTube stuff down below. Once again, I thank you all again. Sincerely. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.